Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own charts of number of cases of COVID-19 for various countries using Python. So what we will be creating will look something like this. So here there's a text box you can give the name of any country and you just press this button and it will plot the number of confirmed cases, deaths and recovered from COVID-19. So here if I give India, it plots this plots data for India. If I give US, it plots data for US. So in this video, you are going to learn how to create this. So we'll get our data from this project. And uh, here, this gives a JSON time series data for the coronavirus cases for every country. And if you click on this link, you will get a JSON formatted data like this and it starts alphabetically like from Afghanistan and it gives a time series data for the number of confirmed cases, the number of deaths and the number of recovered cases. Okay, so I will put a link to this project in the description. So the first step is to actually make a call to this link to get this JSON data. So to make a call to this link, I will have to import requests and then I can do response is equal to requests.get with the link. And then I will have to extract the data from this response by doing r.json. So let's just print it for now. So print data. Okay, so it has printed all the data. So we know that this gets the data correctly. So next step is to actually convert this data into a Python data frame, a pandas data frame to make it easy to work with and easy to visualize as well. So for that, I'll have to import data frame from pandas. So from pandas package, import data frame. Then I can convert this data to a data frame by doing this and let's say i do it just for one particular country so that it's easier to print so if i print this data frame now it prints in an easy to read format here as you can see it has the columns for date then confirm number of deaths and recovered so next step is to actually plot this data so i'll have to import matplotlib.pyplot and to start the chart first step is I'll create a figure so figure is equal to plt dot figure and inside the figure I will add our chart as a subplot and inside that subplot I will plot individually all the three lines so for uh, for confirmed and deaths and recovered so subplot is equal to figure dot add subplot and because I'm only going to add one of these so I give this value as one 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 and now I'll do the actual plotting so subplot dot plot in the first case the x-axis would be just the date the y-axis would be confirmed cases I can give it a label so that it is visible on the plot and I give it a color to be blue and I have to give this legend command to ensure the label actually shows up so I give it a location to be upper left and I'll have to do plot dot show to actually show it okay let's execute this first okay here you can see the plot there is one obvious thing here so in the x-axis it's plotting all the dates so that's why it's not visible so we have to set such that the tick marks here are done maybe once every five or ten days so that it's actually visible so let's do that next so let's first get the limits so start and end is equal to 
subplot dot get x limit and then we can set the x axis ticks. And here we'll have to arrange it in such a way that it starts from the start, ends at the end, and it is equidistantly spaced. So for that we'll need to import numpy. So import numpy as np and here you can give np dot arrange start end and let's say we plot it with a gap of 10 days uh, actually it has to be just this okay now it looks better but it still is appearing horizontal so we need to make it a bit slanted so that we can easily read it so for that we can write a for loop for each of the x ticks we will rotate it by let's say 45 degree okay so for tick in subplot dot get x tick levels tick dot set rotation 45 Okay, now it looks a bit better, as you can see. Here we see all the dates in an easy to understand manner. Okay, so next step, we just plot the other two plots. So number of deaths and number of recovered places. So you can do in the similar way. Here, so number of deaths. And let's say we give color to be red. Next, recovered. We'll give green. So let's execute it again. And yeah, so this is how you plot a time series data by getting the data as a JSON format by doing a call to the corresponding link and actually converting it into a data frame and then actually plotting using PyPlot. So to make it easy to execute, so not every time you want to plot for a country you would want to you know go to the code and change the name here and then use this executing command to do it right so if we make it a graphical user interface where all you have to do is just give your uh, country name and just press a button and it will show you a graph then that will make it much easier for you so to do that we will need to use a library called tkinter so first what i'm going to do is uh, make this part of a function so let's say i call it get chart so that when you click a button this function gets called and you see a plot okay so to use tkinter to so start preparing this uh, graphical user interface we need to import certain packages so first one is so first one we import this sub package of matplotlib which is figure canvas tkagg so we use that to actually plot a chart inside a graphical user interface and we'll also need to import tinter itself and another sub package of the tinter okay so the first thing we'll do is create a window so we do window is equal to tk dot so this creates a window for this graphical user interface and if we do window dot main loop then it just shows the window now yeah so this shows a window and currently it has nothing so we'll add a text field here where we enter the country name as a text and a button so once you press that button, it will take whatever 
value you have entered in the text field and plot a graph for that okay so to get the name let's create a variable called the name is equal to enter dot uh, let's just call it tk tk dot string var and now to create this uh, widget where we enter the name we will need to use this ttk module okay so let's uh, name enter is equal to ttk dot entry and this is how we create a widget so we'll create it in this window which we created here let's give it a width is equal to 15 and it will correspond to a text variable which is simply this name and now we can set it to be part of the grid so when you create this graphical user interface box which you just saw uh, that can be divided into several grids so you can just specify a column and row to decide where this widget ends up so i just give it a column is equal to let's say the first column which is zero and row is equal to one okay so let's check that okay now you can see initially it created a default size now because i have specified its width so it has just created you know one column and a row and here you can enter any value so next we will add a button to it so button is ttk dot button and we will add it in the window we give it a text So trend for a country and command where if you press the button this particular function will be executed so in this case we have created this function called get chart so I just have to give its name here okay so that you if you press the button this command will be executed and now I can specify where it ends up so button dot grid and let's say I give it column is equal to zero, row is equal to two. Okay, so now you can see there's a field, there's a button, but we haven't set it up well enough to plot a chart inside the Tikinter graphical user interface. We need to actually create a canvas and add it. So we'll utilize this figure canvas TKAGG package to actually add the canvas okay so canvas is equal to figure canvas tkgg and we give the figure here which we have created before and we give it a grid to let it know where to actually put it to get tk widget dot grid and here let's say we give it a row we give it row equal to one column equal to four column span is equal to three these values you can play around based on your requirement so we give it a row span to be let's say 20 okay now you can see i gave it a country value here and it basically extracted the data and plotted the data for that particular country okay one more change so here i have just hard coded it for india i need to actually get this string here from whatever value we entered in the text box so you can do country is equal to here we get this name variable so we can do name dot get and just to make sure you don't enter null value and it still tries to do something so if country is equal to nothing so if you don't give it any value then just return so don't do anything otherwise here you can just give 
country so that it works for every country okay so give india plots for india if i give for us plots for us so these data are updated probably once a day so these may not be actually real time but yeah pretty close to real time as you can see in china it has stabilized a bit so yeah this this is how you create a graphical user interface and plot data by getting the data from a link and convert into a json format then convert into a data frame and then actually do the plotting so i assumed in this video that you already have python installed if you don't have then there is an online website where you can basically do what i did here uh, instead of doing here you just can do in your browser okay so the website is this i will put it in the description so what you can do is get all this code i'll put a link to the code as well in the description so you can put all this code here and simply do run and it will do all these installation of all the imports which we did it will take some time okay finally you will get this sort of ugly look looking ui but still it, it should work so if i give a value here and plot yeah it it gives a plot here Give India, yeah, it gives for India as well. So, yeah, this is just a starting point. You can do lots of things with this data. So, basically, what you can do is you can plot for several countries, you can compare them, you can plot them on the same graph to see how they compare against each other, and you can also compare trends of the rate of change of these numbers. So, there is this paper which got recently published, and what they do is they compare the countries with uh, countries like Italy or Spain or France they compare it with the trends of China and what they have plotted here is this uh, second order differential of the number of deaths from the time when the lockdown actually started okay so this uh, line is the lockdown line and the red line here is for China so as you can see after the lockdown this second order derivative of this number of deaths which is basically the acceleration of the number of deaths started to decrease so it basically decelerated okay and similar trend has been starting to emerge for italy or spain or even united kingdom so the number of deaths themselves might not be decreasing but at least their second order derivative has been decreasing and this is something you can try and plot using what i showed you okay so this is this can be one of the homework okay to summarize what we learned is how to get JSON data and to actually plot it and how to actually use Tkinter to create a graphical user interface. This is by no means the most perfect way to do this. I just gave you one way of doing this. I'm not very experienced in Python, but yeah, if you know any better way, then feel free to comment on the comment section. And if you have any further suggestions, then feel free to comment as well. Cheers.